Welcome to a documentation of every Transformers animated reference and other media from 2015 to 2021. In the previous video, we discussed 2007 to 2014, so you can click on that if you would like. Without further ado, let's begin. In the 2015 issue First Contact of the Combiner Wars crossover, Starscream looks at holograms of various potential new bodies, all of which are from different shows and continuities. Animated Starscream is among them. In 2015's Windblade Volume 2, Issue 6, two unnamed bots appear resembling Jetfire and Jetstorm in their Transformers animated incarnations. I choose to call them Firejet and Stormjet. Why is there already a character called Stormjet? In the very next issue of Windblade, two silhouetted Carcerians resemble animated Optimus and animated Sentinel. On October 3rd, 2015, the Hasbro Q&A site Ask Vector Prime was taken over by three versions of Swindle from across the multiverse. Apparently, at some point, one of these Swindles went on a date with Transformers Animated Swindle, but the other two Swindles didn't like this and sent TFA Swindle back to his dimension. This is canon. In More Than Meets the Eye, issue 46, Nook, the robot squirrel, introduced in the Allspark Almanac, appears in a group of roboids surrounding Fortress Maximus. In Volume 16 of the Japanese-exclusive Legends comic, we temporarily return to the Transformers animated universe, as you can see in these panels translated by TFW2005 user Daruji. After the events of Endgame, Slipstream is on the run with Swindle, who gives her a trans-dimensional gyro rotor that allows her to leap into the Legends universe. TFA Slipstream actually becomes a recurring character in this comic. In the issue, Return, the most evil duo of the Japanese exclusive adventure manga, a new version of Lockdown works with Runamuck and Runabout. In 2016's Transformers Deviations, an alternate retelling of Transformers the movie from 1986, animated Doug Bass and an animated Auto Trooper make cross-continuity cameos. In the Beast Wars Uprising story, the Predacon Manifesto, a shattered glass version of Yokotron is stated to exist in the G1 continuity. One of the writers of this story was Jim Sorensen, co-writer of the AllSpark Almanac. By 2017, the Robots in Disguise comic series had been rebooted as Optimus Prime. In Optimus Prime issue 5, a junkie on swears by Weird Al, a reference to Weird Al, Yankovic who provided a cover song for Transformers the Movie, and played Rekgar in Transformers Animated. I am Rekgar! I dare to be stupid! In the Transformers 2017 annual, a Transformers Animated Soundwave toy appears on page 9, panel 3. In the 2017 Robots in Disguise episode, Guilty as Charged, a classic phrase from Transformers Animated gets spouted. In addition, Trypticon Prison is referenced. He escaped from Trypticon Prison. Trypticon Prison was planned to be a central location in the cancelled fourth season of Transformers Animated. Just a few days later in the IDW continuity, in ROM vs Transformers Issue 1, Blitzwing was drawn with Transformers Animated inspired goggles on his helmet. In February 2018, More Than Meets the Eye, now rebranded as Lost Light, made yet another reference to the Allspark Almanac when it mentioned that the prison planet Garrus 9 is in the Elba system. In the star map from the Allspark Almanac, Garrus 9 is an individual prison on the planet Elba, which is in and of itself a reference to the Challenge of the GoBots episode, Escape from Elba. Near the end of Lost Light, and the first IDW continuity as a whole, Issue 21 sees Megatron return from the Functionalist universe with a fusion cannon on his arm based on Megatron's animated incarnation. In Optimus Prime Issue 25, the final issue of the entire continuity, simply titled Post, RC goes on to teach the next generation of Cybertronians. Prior to this, she had only ever been a teacher in the Transformers animated continuity an occupation that would have played a far larger role in the planned fourth season. In 2018, Transformers Cyberverse made constant allusions to Transformers Animated, even very obscure ones, such as the Autobot High Council and Starscream's Sonic Screams, both appearing in Season 1's Matrix of Leadership. Slipstream, Lockdown, and a character based on Lugnut named Clover all play central roles in the series, and truly develop personalities of their own. Clover even has her own version of Lugnut's Punch of Kill Everything. Uh -huh. 
Randolph Hurd, the Cyberverse story editor, claims to have fallen in love with Lugnut's design, and Mate Cat, one of the writers, considers gender swapping Lugnut to be one of the biggest accomplishments of the series. In addition, the Cyberverse episode, The Journey, shows stasis pods used in a functionally identical manner to how Transformers Animated showcased them in Transform and Roll Out. Later in 2018, the film Bumblebee depicts Blitzwing with a German accent, a trait introduced in Transformers Animated. It's big, it's bold, it's sassy. In 2019, IDW launched a new, rebooted continuity, which gave way to some of the most frequent and obscure Transformers animated references we've ever gotten. Issue 4 once again establishes RC as a school teacher. Issue 12 introduces the TFA exclusive character Lightbright. Issue 13 shows auto troopers based directly on their Transformers animated appearances. Issue 15 introduces new versions of Slipstream and Lugnut, and Issue 23 shows two bots in a crowd resembling TFA's depiction of Scrounge. The aforementioned Japanese-exclusive Legends comic ended in June of 2019, and in the final issue, epilogue, Slipstream returns to her home dimension, where she helps Swindle and Starscream bust the Decepticons out of Trypticon prison. I would like to remind everyone that this is canon. This is the canonical farthest point of the TFA timeline. The comic series Transformers Galaxies, part of the IDW2 continuity, opened with a four-part miniseries called Constructicons Rising, a possible homage to Rise of the Constructicons from Transformers Animated. Much like an aforementioned Ben 10 episode, a toy of animated Bumblebee appears in the Rescue Bots Academy episode Be Prepared. We now reach probably the most in-depth and intricate reference to Transformers Animated. When the show was searching for extras to fill its Season 3 crowd scenes, sites were set on Tapout and Glyph. Their page in the Yellspark Almanac depicts them as having a relationship and also rewrites their personality. The 2020 Transformers Valentine's Day special of the second IDW continuity is based entirely on this page from the Allspark Almanac, and the whole story revolves around their love for each other. On top of this, Blackout appears, specifically modeled after his animated incarnation. Believe it or not, it doesn't end there. Current and future media are also set to continue the legacy of Transformers Animated in the form of the 2021 Beast Wars comic series. This comic feels like Beast Wars and Transformers Animated had a baby with Beast Wars naturally having the most dominant genes of the two. Optimus Primal's crew is just a small-scale protoform delivery team, pre-Beast Mode Waspinator literally has Wasp's head, and the comic artist Josh Burcham took inspiration from Derek J. Wyatt's style. On Instagram, he regularly does TFA art as practice, and the prehistoric Earth seems to be modeled after its brief appearance in Predacons Rising. The show's over, and while the executives at Hasbro don't seem particularly interested in it, the individual creators working for and around the company are fans. Jim Sorensen, May Cat, Randolph Hurd, Josh Burcham, Nick Roche, and countless others within Hasbro's sphere of influence that didn't get mentioned really enjoy Transformers Animated and are ensuring that his legacy is not forgotten. And that's something we should appreciate. That was every reference to Transformers Animated and other Transformers media that I could find between 2015 and 2021. What was your favorite reference? And do you think I missed any? Let me know in the comments section down below. Special thank to my Patreon supporters, they're on the screen. Uh, normally Chris McFeely has a big, big scrolling list, but I have seven. And actually I'm editing this in February, so who knows if I'll even have them still in April. That would be embarrassing if I have them on the list and they're not even there in February. Okay, video's done, bye.